tell them you look marvelous. Tell them happy Mother's Day, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the, uh, I want to first say this morning, happy Mother's Day to all of our wonderful, our beautiful mothers, amen. amen. I just applaud each and every one of you this morning, amen. And also, I was a little nervous about coming up here today, amen, because I, you know, I, I cannot say that I know how you feel if your mother is not living, because my mother is still alive, and so I'm able to talk to her and visit with her, amen. And so I'm not going to say that I know how you feel, but I'm going to say that I'm praying with you today, and I applaud you if you've lost your mother and you've come to church today, amen, that you didn't allow the spirit of depression to take over your very mind. But I thank God right now that he will begin to give you a peace that will surpass all understanding, hallelujah, that he will replace your tears with joy this very morning, hallelujah. And I do stand in agreement with you this morning and know that we love you, amen. My subject this morning is the love of a mother, amen. The love of a mother. I want to define a uh, mother in Webster, it defines it as a, a woman, that has given birth or uh, given a child some affection, amen? But I define motherhood as a mother is someone who loves unconditionally. Doesn't matter how you respond back to me, I'm gonna love you with the love of God because I have the love of a mother in my heart, amen? And then another thing, of my definition, it places the needs of your children above your very own. You know, there are many times that we have gone without just for our children. Can I get an amen, hallelujah? Now y'all know I like y'all to talk to me. You got to talk back to me, amen. And if, if I get a step on your toe, just say ouch, or just look straight, won't nobody know, amen. And then the other thing is that we as a mother, we, we not only tell our children that we love them, but we show them by the things that we do for them, amen, that we love them. How many of you will stay with a man and he ain't never give you nothing, hallelujah? I don't think so. So we want to, I just want to let everyone know that the love of a mother is a wonderful thing, amen? So this morning, I'm going to talk about three mothers in the Bible. You see, there are all types of mothers. You have uh, mothers that have given birth. You have foster mothers. You have people that have adopted children and they're adoptive mothers. Then you turn around and you have godmothers. And then you have stepmothers that come in and join to, to, to your, your husband or wife, and you have kids that were already there. But I told them at 8.30 service, I like to call them love mothers, amen, because one step just sounds so bad like you stepping on something. I never tell people, Jeremy is my stepson. No, he's my son. Because how can I love his father and not love him? Hallelujah. So he is not my stepchild. He is my oldest child. Amen. And so, and then we have the kind of mothers that I think I have become at the daycare. You have attached yourself to somebody's child that you just love. I got one that's, if you come to mind, I ain't going to call her name. But, but I just love the little child. And sometimes she didn't have a coat. One time, she, she, her shoes, she real rough on shoes. So I went to the store, and I bought her a coat, and I bought her some shoes. Well, I'm not saying that to boast or to brag, but I'm saying that because I saw a need, and I wanted to meet a need. So what I'm saying today, for people that may be barren, you may not have children, but if you have blessed somebody else's children, you're just as a mother as anyone else, hallelujah. You don't have to give them birth, amen, to be a mother. And so that's the category I think I, 
I stand in. But right now we're going to look at Eve in Genesis 3 and 20. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. You see, Eve was the, uh, Eve name means living. She was the first mother in the Bible. She was the first woman to ever give birth. I wonder, you know, how she felt or did she, was she nervous when she found out that she was pregnant? You see, they didn't have prenatal classes back then. And then I wonder how she felt as she was beginning to go through labor. There wasn't a doctor there. They didn't have nurses. They didn't have uh, physicians, assistants back then. She had to do it all on her own, y'all. And then, I wonder when she was getting ready to, I mean, she was already at home, but if she had to bring the child home, you know, in the hospital, the only thing they tell you that you need is a car seat. They don't give you a to tell you how to raise a child or if they get colic or if you're going to have postpartum depression. You have to feel your way. See, she didn't have an Elizabeth to go and talk to and sit under her counsel, amen. She had to work this thing on her own. Another thing about Eve, uh, it's mentioned, you know, she had many other children because in Genesis 5 and 4, it lets us know that she had more daughters, she had more sons, but I want to focus on Cain, Abel, and Seth. You see, Cain murdered Abel. So not only was Eve the first mother, not only was she our mother, but she also lost her son. She was the first mother that ever lost her son in death. The first one. And you know, we as mothers, we're, we don't think we're going to bury our children. We think our children are going to bury us. But not in this case. And then it was through Seth's lineage that people began to bring up their children in the ammunition of the Lord. And you see, mothers, we nurture, we provide Amen. using our husband's money my, my, my. or their daddy's money. <laughs> we teach them. We discipline them. Mothers have a remarkable ability to change the world through their children. You see, in Proverbs 29 and 15, it says the rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. And then Proverbs 22 and 15, it says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far away. Let me tell you when the rod of correction helped me. I was in middle school uh, going to May Eve before they moved us to Palmer Pillar. I got with a group of folks, and I, you know, we was doing all kind of things. Stuff you wouldn't even think Sister Sherry would do. But I was doing them. And lo and behold, we got caught one day, and we got marched in the principal's office. And when I tell y'all know what a paddling is, anybody know what a paddling is? Paddling, paddling. They paddled back when I went to school. Well, I got a paddling, and I'm talking about why he would pay y'all. It was hurting. I was like, oh, my God. So the correction, raw the correction was getting me right. I ain't never been back in the principal's office. Never got another paddling. Because it hurt too bad, see. So I discovered in high, when I got, was getting ready to go to high school, you have more fun when you're a good child and you're a good student. Everybody lets you do stuff. You become the teacher's pet, hallelujah, because of the rod of correction. Now let me tell you something. They need to put the rod of correction back in schools today. But now what they do in school, you go home and tell your mama, such and such a did this to me. Talk about your teacher. Your mama now come, come into the school ready to beat the teacher up. What kind of foolishness is that? What kind of foolishness is that? What generation are we living in when we condone foolishness from our children? And we step down to their level and instead of making them go higher and reach higher. Because, let me tell you something, if you don't correct your children, the police will. 
And if the police can't correct them, the prison system will correct them for you. And you don't want that. So we, as a, a mature adult, as mothers, we have to begin, if our children are little, we need to train them up in the way that they should go. That when they get old, it won't depart from them. And we need to teach them right and wrong. Don't sugarcoat it. Come here, I'm going to knock the fool up, up our teeth. <coughs> time out. See, we have to use time out at the daycare. But some of them after schools, y'all, I'm telling you, I have to pray in the Holy Ghost. Because I got one, a uh, uh, couple of, they so hard-headed, they talks back to me. And I have, I, I had to catch my, I told the girl, I said, I'm going to tell you something. The only two, it's two reasons that I have not slapped you upside your head. It's first, I don't want to lose my license. And then I'm going to have to fight your mama. And I don't know how to fight y'all. I ain't no brawler. I never wanted no scars or nothing on my back. I was kind of vain, amen. But I'm just saying, they so hard-headed, no respect. And these little children, they cussing, saying the B word, saying S-H-I-T, and they don't even know how to uh, 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 spell. But they can say it. Where they getting it from? And then that nerd to call, you know, say, you a B. I say, I'm a what? I guess, they say, that's good. I said, now where I come from, that ain't good. Because <laughs> back in the day, you get some soap, and somebody will wash your mouth out with it. Hallelujah. My second mother this morning, I'm not going to be before you long, amen. <laughs> We're going to go, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3. And I want you to know there are no perfect mothers. There are no perfect mothers. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. Sixteen through twenty-eight. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him. And the one woman said, Oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered, that this woman was delivered also, and we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, say we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. And she rose at midnight and took my son from my bedside beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. They shall spake before the king. Thus they spake before the king. Then said the king, The one said this, This is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, Nay, but thy son is dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two. Give half to one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yawned upon, up, upon her son. And she said, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. Let's
Let me tell you something about a real woman. A real mother would allow someone else to have her child, take care of her child, that rather than have it killed. A real mother. Let me tell you, I have never met a selfish mother in my life. Never. Because we are always giving and sacrificing for our children. I told them at 830 service, we sacrificed our bodies for nine months, and some of us, like me, I ain't got it back yet. We've been sacrificing and sacrificing and giving and giving, you know, stretch marks that, you know, they say you put this on and you put that on, but that's a sacrifice. I almost died with my second child. That would have been a sacrifice, hallelujah, because that's what mothers do. You give a sacrificial uh, offering for your children, and you love them above all things. Our mothers, we, they, we feed, and we nourish, we supply. I'm talking about everything that they ever have need of. We always do that. I don't know anyone that would carry me for nine months. Y'all, when I broke my leg, you know, I had different people sporadically coming and doing everything, but no one was there 100%. People will be with you a little while, but they're not going to go over and beyond like a mother would do for her child. Just would not have it. Ask yourself, how many new outfits have you gotten and your mama still wearing the same ones? How many pair of shoes you got and she still don't have but one pair of tennis shoes? How about the, la the, the last time she gave you the last meal that you ate and she went to bed hungry and you didn't even know it? Or how about when she, you needed a bill paid and she gave you the money and then had to get on the telephone and call Alabama Power or, 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 or the Bell South to have an extension on hers. The love of a mother. The love of a mother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or how many times has your mother gone in her wallet and given you the last that she had, but she had a smile on her face? I'm talking about, do I have any mothers in this place? Hallelujah. I'm talking about that can identify with what I'm talking about. Sending tuition to colleges, putting money in checking accounts, and you got $10 in your pocket. The love of a mother. A mother's love is going to make sure that you get where you need to be so that you can take care of yourself one day. Hallelujah. I don't care if your mama is a, a harlot like the, the, that woman, where they were prostitutes. I don't care what she was, if she was a school teacher, a maid, a janitor. I don't care. We owe our mothers respect. We owe them honor. And we owe them our life, hallelujah. Because if you on this side of heaven, you came through a woman, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at your neighbor and say, love your mother while you still can. Hallelujah. My last <laughs> and my final mother this morning is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Go with me to Luke chapter 1. I pray you're being blessed, y'all. Mighty quiet. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's Mother's Day. I didn't know I was going to be here, y'all. Pastor Roberts, uh, I don't know how this happened in the office. <laughs> that they booked him to go speak on Mother's Day in Baton Rouge, amen. And I said to him, I was real upset. I said, I can't believe you're not going to be here for Mother's Day. He said, you ain't my mama. <laughs> I said, 
okay. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Good, we don't keep score. See, we don't keep score. But I guarantee the spoils that's going to come behind me getting up here after I had to cook and clean my house because I got guests coming. And I've been up since 3 o'clock. I got some spoils coming, y'all. I don't know what they are, I don't know what color, but I better have some spoils coming, hallelujah. Because Father's Day is coming. Ain't it coming? Is it coming? Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Y'all know, y'all know, so Sherry gonna keep it 100%. Real. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's the love of a wonderful wife. <laughs> Not getting upset. Praise the Lord. Amen. Genesis 1:26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of this kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing that I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, and therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. You see, Mary was faced with difficulties, many of them, just like you and I. You know, some of us, when we get pregnant, yeah, we real happy. I'll never forget when I was, got pregnant with Trey, and uh, Pastor Roberts came in, one of his friends from college, and I said, ooh, I'm pregnant. He said, ooh, ooh yeah, we did it. I was like, huh? Oh. Like, yeah, we did it. We sure we did it. You know, but some people are happy. Some people are not happy. Some people don't want to tell nobody. Because, you know, it just depends on the circumstance or if you were planning to have a baby, amen? Or some people may have lost one child and then conceived another one and they're being kind of quiet until the trimesters come, amen? So some people are faced with different things. Let me ask you something. Would you, if you in here and you got a husband and you, I mean, and he was your uh, fiance, you engaged, and you go tell him, well, baby, I just need to explain something. The angel came to me, and he told me that I'm, you know, I'm pregnant, but he came and he put it on the inside of me. Now, who, how many of y'all men, any men up in here, how many of y'all going, okay, we go, that's fine. The Holy Ghost did that. I didn't do it, but the Holy Ghost did. Not many men going to marry you when you tell them that. So what I'm trying to say to you is that whenever you conceive, people have different emotions going through them. But I tell people all the time, when they come to me for conferences or anything, counseling, I tell them, when you get pregnant, be careful of the influences and the people that's around you. Because however you feel when you're carrying that child begins to seep into the spirit of the child that you're carrying. How do you think people are born with low self-esteem, y'all, and holding heads all down because their mama was shamed because they got pregnant? Let me tell you something. It was just happened out of season, but you are not a mistake. Look at your name and say, you are not a mistake, hallelujah. God knew you when he formed you in your mother's womb. You are not a mistake, and don't let anybody tell you you are a mistake. You were fearfully and wonderfully made, hallelujah. And then, 
Don't let folks talk. Ooh, they ain't gonna be, that child ain't gonna be nothing. He ain't gonna amount to, to nothing. I ain't gonna achieve nothing. You begin to call them words to fall to the ground and to be a no prophet. And you begin to hold on to your seed and say, great shall my seed be in the earth realm, hallelujah. I think that every need that this child has will come to pass because you will supply all of our needs. I thank you, Lord, that you daily load me with benefits. So every benefit, everything that I have need of, you've already given it to me. Got to begin to open up our mouth. Now you know, in that little town of Nazareth, it's a little town, you know I ain't grow up in a little town, but I love to watch Andy Griffin, y'all. And let me tell you something, just think about Barney. Do y'all know Barney? Do y'all, do y'all watch Andy Griffin, anybody? Just think in that little small town. You know, you remember Andy and Helen, he, he going with the line, he overheard something, he going getting everybody, think the folks had done got married. Old nosy gossiping, Barney. So just think if he had heard that Mary was pregnant, he would go from the barber shop to the grocery store, to the corner, to the drug store, just telling everybody business at the gas station with Goomer, hallelujah. So you have to be careful what you allow people to speak in your life. And then let me tell you this, 30 years later, when Jesus started his ministry, they were still trying to put knives and everything in his back, calling him illegitimate. So they'll call you a lot of things. Just make sure whatever they call you is not the truth. Make them out a lie. I want you to tell me that I can't obtain something. Then I'm going to watch. I'm going to be like a dog trying to get a bone. I'm going to get everything that the devil said I couldn't have. You just put fire under my feet to make me do it even the more. When you tell me no, that means my daddy God said yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then today, like I said, you know, there may be people in here, you may feel, feel like you weren't a good mother, that you didn't do all the things that you could have done for your children. Let me tell you today, don't even worry about it. But I'm going to remind you that God forgives and God forgets. I told y'all all, every time I get up here, you may remember what you did, but God doesn't. And the only people that remember it is you and whoever you was doing it with. God put it in the sea of forgetfulness. And he doesn't bring it back up. So when your marriages, don't bring old mess up. You think I'm going to go home and bring this up? He done made me have to come up here on the day I'm going to be having a good time. No, it's over. Hallelujah. It's already done. Can't keep scoring marriage. Or in any kind of relationship, put the scoreboard down, tab the card. Shoot, when I married Papa Brown, I made him play, tab that player book. <laughs> he had to tie it up. <laughs> tie it up, some pictures he had to tear them up to. <laughs> I don't want nothing up in here that don't, 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 don't look like me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at your name and say, thank God for grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, let me tell you this. Mary had to face folks hating her child. Now, let me tell you, women, y'all need y'all help. Now, this Mother's Day. I'm up here on Mother's Day. Y'all may not never see this again. Hallelujah. Y'all know my son, the Pentecost. <coughs> It is not Mother's Day, <laughs> but, but it's some fighting words, you know. You get a little fight in you, you know, I may try to do a little something, but you, I, you have to, have y'all heard, you put my child's name in your mouth. You can talk about me all you want to. Don't talk about my children. Don't talk about the thing that I labored 
to bring to the earth realm. So don't you think your daddy God like this. Anytime anybody put their mouth on you. Because God knew you before you knew yourself. And anytime they put that foolishness on you, God said, okay, don't worry about it. I got your back. I got you covered. You don't talk about the children of the Most High God. You just don't do it. And you see, when Jesus was born, evil was set in motion in the earth realm. And don't you know, when you give birth to a child, that the devil, Satan, wants to come in immediately and cause confusion. Trying to kill you, baby. See, in Matthew 2, chapter 2, you don't have to go there, but an angel appeared to Joseph and told him that him and Mary and the baby needed to go to Egypt because Harold was trying to kill him. And he told him to stay there until I tell you to go somewhere else. So you know if the enemy, the devil, came after Jesus, you know how much more he wants to come after us. Hallelujah. And you see, when our children are young, we're supposed to protect them. We're supposed to curtail what they watch on TV, the computer, what they have on it. I told them 8.30, even at the, uh, my babies at the daycare, two, three, and four-year-olds have tablets. I have to, I just be checking them out. Sometimes I download some of them games because they're so fun, you know. But everybody has access is what I'm saying. So we have to be careful. But when they get older, when they get older, y'all, we have to make sure that they grow up to respect adults. And I'm not just talking about the adults that's around y'all. People that they know. You respect anybody because it takes a village to raise a child. Hallelujah. You don't know who knows me. And come and say, I saw such and such doing such and such. He ain't had no business. God has eyes everywhere and watches over all of us. And as a mother, we cannot uphold children in foolishness. We cannot do it, y'all. We can't allow them to, to talk to uh, adults and teachers and people in authority like they don't have no sense. What's wrong with yes, ma'am? The after schoolers answer me, what? Huh? I said, excuse me. Like, what is, what is the problem? And listen to me. When you are a mother, you love your children, yes, and you provide for them. But providing for them without guidance, that ain't love. You setting them up for the great fall because everybody's not going to respect disobedience from a child. And then the Bible tells us, to honor your mother and your father that your days will be long on this earth. So we have to begin to help our children. We have to look at them and believe God for them to be better and to do better. But don't worry. Look at your name and say, don't worry. Look on the other side and just say, pray. Because our God is a promise keeper. Now ask me how I know it. In Deuteronomy 7 and 9, it says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is good. He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy, which means he's a promise keeper, hallelujah, with them that love and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Did y'all hear me? I said to a thousand generations. Lift your name and say he has you covered. He has you covered, your children's children covered, your children's children, children. He got all of us covered. Look on the other side and say he got us covered. And as I close this morning, I want to leave you with this. If you are a mother and like everything that your children are doing, they're making good grades, they're doing everything they say they're going to do, they don't never miss curfew. They don't never be rude to anyone. Then I applaud you. 
I applaud you. But if you are a mother and you know that your children are not living up to the standard that they are capable of living, then I say to you, speak the word over their lives. Remind God of his promises that the fruit of your womb shall be great, hallelujah. And that there is nothing too hard or impossible to God. You begin to anoint them with oil. Bless their room. Go in there and put some oil on their pillows. Anoint their car. Anoint the steering wheel where they have to go. That they will not go anywhere that they don't need to go. Hallelujah. And then you cover them in the blood of Jesus. When they're not around and you don't know where they are, you say, God, but you know. You sit high and you look low. And I plead the blood. I put a, 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 a round of protection around and about them that no man can pluck them out of his hand. Hallelujah. And then we need to cover this entire generation. We need to cover them with the blood of Jesus. We need to begin to call out uh, uh, places, locations. I come a preacher in the name of Jesus. I thank you that there will be no more murders, no more drive throughs no more hangings, no more disappearing children in the name of Jesus. Whatever community you live in, you just need to begin to speak to what you want to see. Hallelujah. 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 I pray you were blessed this morning. And I want you to stand to your feet. Let's make this confession with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Father, I thank you that this is the day that you have made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. And now, Father, I thank you that I am raising up a standard in my house, in my city, in my community, that there shall be no more wars, no rumors of wars. I thank you, Lord, that there shall be no more murders, no more suicides, no more beatings, no more cop shootings. And I thank you, Lord, that you shall Put a hand of protection around and about everything that's attached to me. And I thank you, Lord. And I say to myself that I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And, I'm the re and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs>